to them over there prior to that uh, we were treating this like a Hawaiian first birthday which means uh, whether the child knows it or not we're gonna go off <laughs> so hence the the plants that will end up in my yard I'm just gonna water them and drive my neighbors crazy and um yeah and the highlighters were yeah okay.
but I'm going to say this song was supposed to be called Green Bottles, like Heineken bottles, because that's like the only beer I thought people drank growing up. <laughs> I didn't know other beers existed. Um, just Heineken. And then I came to Oregon and there were 
The first uh, non-Heineken I bought was at the, what's that place? That's Southwest Portland Rock, Rock Bottom Brewery. Is that still a place? And they had like a, something that sounded like a Whopper. And I bought it and I was like, this does not taste like a Whopper. <laughs> I was very disappointed, it was like, hey. Like a, a hamburger Whopper or a... Oh, oh, malt. Oh. My bad. <laughs> Like a chocolate malt. It was like a chocolate malt. It was like, oh. Thanks for clarifying. Yes. Were you Ryan? Oh, a sad story about a Whopper. Um, my, my grandma's friend lived a long life, long life. She was fiery, and she would go drive through a Burger King. I, don't, I, I like to say daily. I don't think she could have lived as long as she did, and it be a daily habit, but that's how the story was told to me. But she, she passed away in a Burger King drive-through ordering her Whopper. Nice. Wow. Anyways, Five, this song's called Glass Bottle. <laughs> I feel like she was glad about that exit. She did. But I meant a chocolate Whopper. I love Whoppers. <laughs> this song's called Glass Bottle. Try again, try again. I was talking about green bottles and I started on in the wrong key. I'm so sorry. The song's called Glass Bottles. It's okay. <laughs> your phone I'm, I'm calling you Hey. 
that my music would prompt most people to dance. I mean, you can dance to anything. You can dance to nothing. Um, but it's not typically after a bow set that people are like, yeah. I really, I really got to groove. Um, this one, you could dance in your seat. Like, you like, um, flex your butt. <laughs> are you doing it? Okay, 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 but cheek, but cheek, but cheek. Okay. So in 
I recorded that I set up a camera and a trailer. <laughs> There's some really, um, it's not quality dance. I mean, all dancing, it, I felt free. That is true. It did not <laughs> look good when I was editing it, <laughs> but I, I still put it out because, uh, I don't know, because it was what it looked like. It was honest. Thinking about how I want to describe some of this. Sorry, Kirk, you're like, I'm ready. And I'm going to talk. Um, I'm going to piece this out. So these plants, my friend Nicole and Christian helped me build this. Uh, this is supposed to be like the ginger, the apapuhi. And this is kalo, or taro. Some of you know taro because you drink boba. Yes. Um, or if you've had poi, that plant is supposed to be that. Faustina is being illuminated by the sun. That was a good one. <laughs> and then this was like, this was our rendition of the tea leaf plant. Um, it's a little pokier than we intended, but, but I'm just telling you what it is. 
cool. Ready? <laughs>
for our older sister, by our, I mean, the woman in the front is my younger sister, Kapu. This is for Don Javier. Shadows can 
Vaughn. Is Vaughn here? I heard yes from Here I am. Vaughn, come on up. If you want. I don't know if you want to still. Well, while I'm setting up here, um, I wanted to introduce the band and the band. So, this is Margaret. And Margaret is, um... <laughs> you can just massage. <laughs> Margaret is a choir right now, if you didn't notice. And she's dismissing certain blinking lights in order to focus on singing like five people's parts which any blinking light for me on that would have been like, Ryan, <laughs> which you already saw. This is Ryan. And Ryan produced the record that you're hearing right now. Ryan is like a home base for so many artists in Portland, uh, recording them, playing with them, hosting their rehearsals in his space. And yeah, very generous, thank you. This is Kirk. Hello, Kirk. And I nervously texted Kirk a while back. I was like, hi, my name is Isabeau, and I was wondering if you want to play drums for me, probably at least with a lot of disclaimers. Like, if you don't want to, that's okay. Like, you can say no, you don't even have to respond to this. I won't even be bothered. And classic. <laughs> and, uh, and he responded so promptly and so kindly and then just jumped into a bunch of like, like we've all played together before and Kurt just hopped in and came to rehearsals right after really long days of teaching kids drums, which, yeah. oh. That's all. You can bring it up or you can sit with us or stand. This is Faustina. Faustina, according to my dad, looks like Auntie Michelet. He saw her at a show and he's like, she looks like Auntie Michelet. And then that's all he said to her. I do. She does. She does look like... I am an auntie. She is an auntie. I'm an auntie. She's a good auntie. And Faustina is also a musician, singer, songwriter, playing bass. Um, she could have, yeah, played any of these roles. And she's so gracious. Yeah. No? <laughs> yes, she could have. And I'm just really honored that she's... Uh, wants to play these songs. Thank you, Faustino. This is plays everything. That, that's accurate, right? That you, you could play everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everything. And they've just been so kind throughout being a singer-songwriter in Portland and always interested. I feel like I need to look at you when I say this. What? I feel like I need to look at you. This oh, is yeah. too. You're always interested in the story of a person before, like there's no, um, there's no posturing. And I'm getting older, so that's like, I have like very little patience for posturing. And I appreciate how kind and genuine you are, even though you could do everything up here better than most of us. <laughs> so, thank you. And then in this, uh, what are we gonna call it? It's like the palm tree. This palm tree over here. This is the Iolana Collective. <laughs> and then leading them in the front, that is my younger CC, Kapu. And in like any like first birthday, we're like, what else could we do? Like, let's dance. So. And I can always trust that she's gonna be like, well, and we should also dress up, and we should also, so. Thank you, Kapu, thank you, Yolanda Collective. And this is Vaughn. <laughs> oh my god. Uwoki. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vaughn, we will always say that we were the friend that we each other needed like in elementary school. Like if, yeah, that would have been cool. But we did not have each other, so <laughs> we have each other now. Right, right, now. thank you for planting me. Right? <laughs> Throw away the key 
I used to be a high school teacher, and I... Um, yay, high school! Yay, high school! And, and middle school for three years. Just kidding. You didn't like middle school? No. I didn't like it. No. None of it. Yeah. I don't know if I liked middle, I didn't like middle school, but I liked middle schoolers. They're very, um, like you can't have the conversations you would want to have that you can have with a high schooler, but then you could be like, if you're in your chair before the bell, you get your face on a wall with a star above it, and that's like a big incentive, like that's power. <laughs> They're more easily persuaded, like this is cool, and this is cool. <laughs> but not so much high school, not so much. Um, but I wrote, sorry, why did I bring that? I wrote this initially to my students, but also realized in the midst of it that I was talking to them, but more like pleading with them. Um, or maybe what I needed to hear. Yeah, it was what I needed to hear, and then I wanted to offer it back to them. It's called Tell the Kids, and the kids is not just like tiny people. You're the kids. Who are the kids?
Um, thank you again for showing up. It, um, that's not a small thing. And it's definitely not a small thing um, these days as you've all recalculated what's worth your time and energy, which I respect. So to, to have you choose to be here ahead of time or to get your ticket and then to actually get dressed <laughs> and get here, I know the barriers, so the worry has subsided when we realized that people were gonna join us as we made music. <laughs>
If you're interested, Vaughn, there's one more song. <laughs> but if, if it feels, yeah, you should come up. Oh, that's right, okay, stay there, stay there. <laughs> this one has a story, but I realize that there have been stories for a lot of them. Um, this one also has a zine, this song, and earlier in the set, there's a song called Shared Fire, but there's two zines back there. They're free, take it, enjoy it, maybe not, and then hand it over, like, share it with someone else when you're done, your pal. Um, could put it in your bag and then, like, give it to someone randomly on the bus. But people don't seem to want free stuff. They think they think it's a... What do they think it is? Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard tampon. <laughs> oh, I was like, I might take that. But uh, those are one of the scenes back there is, is the prince. And the prince has a story. I typed it up, it's in there. But uh, this song came out of a conversation with my dad a handful of years ago. This is not a new song, and it's not a new story. So if you've been to any show, I am so sorry. Um, it is the same story, but uh, my dad was sitting on the edge of my bed when I was visiting home. When I woke up, he's like, I have to tell you about Auntie Io. And we've been a very storytelling family, so if my dad's making a point of being like, there's something, there's a new detail that you don't know that you need to know, it's important, because it's not, it's just happening in real time around the table or wherever else. And he proceeded to tell us, or tell me, and then probably has told my siblings about Auntie Io, who is one of the family members who would take him in in the summers. And to understand why they would, he, this person was so important to him, um, you need to know that when our dad was three, he and his brothers and my grandma Javier were in a car accident. I think it was on the day that Hawaii was celebrating statehood. Yeah, so there's like a newspaper article like Hawaii becomes the 50th state and then um, Kahu, Leopold Pu'unoni Vaya'u, their father, was killed in a drunk driving accident. And a lot of people have experienced a tragedy like that, or um, worse, less. But my dad has communicated to us growing up that that was a shattering moment for the family. And he, again, he didn't know it, he didn't have like, language for that as a three-year-old, but it just kind of set off this, in his mind, um, a spiral, and eventually my grandma Fea got help from family members who would take some of the boys during the summers, and some of those situations were good, and some of them were worse than what they had at home. And eventually they send Kaleo, our dad, to uh, a boarding school on the big island. So they take some of the settlement money from the accident, and they're like, Kaleo can't seem to stop burning schools down and getting in fights, so they're like, we'll send them to a boarding school and that will, will fix Kaleo. I don't know if they, that's not fair. I don't think my grandma thought it would fix him. I think she just needed help. But when he was 12, he was sent to HPA. It's a very good school academically, like did really well. But, um, and my dad will be the first to say that academically, it opened some doors for him that other local boys from where he's from didn't have. But he also will say it was like the worst years of his life. And a lot of it is just he, he was a scholarship kid based off of an accident. He didn't look like the other kids. He didn't come from the right pedigree. And um, yeah, they were just relentless on, my, on our dad. And he mentioned that, fast forward, so that's 12 years old, his high school graduation, high school graduations, like first birthdays, are a very big deal. And he invited Grandma Javea, his brothers, probably some other people, and then Auntie Io. And he really looked up to her and the role that she played in the community, it meant a lot that she would care about him. And she shows up at the ceremony and everyone's getting their lay and like, you stand and you just get like buried in lay. <laughs> and um, he sees Auntie Io approaching and their chaplain who had just given him, a, like sadly, was the, the least safe person for him at the school, steps in and tries to intercept Auntie Io and do his kind of like, eh? like show face, make, make connections, I don't want to network. 
And NTEO is like, I'm, I'm here for Kaleo. And then proceeds to go give dad his lay. And dad was like, I felt like a prince. Yeah. yeah. So this song was for dad, but honestly it's for like all the local kids back home. Hey. 
Brian's gonna play you a song. <laughs> funny, funny. Oh, who said Hana Ho? Nice. Nice. I haven't heard that. <laughs> Don't say yay. I have no plan. <laughs> Still yay. Did you notice that they have eyeshadow on? Yeah. That was good, yeah? Yes. I do. She used to 
it out. She cried out in the darkness, but it answered in silence. Oh, my anger, she is tired. She is old. She cried out in the darkness, but in certain silence. And all my anger, she is tired. She. That's it.